Hello artists. Thank you for joining us in learning how to make a watercolor snow globe. Here's our final snow globe and it's gorgeous. Really get in there, see all those beautiful little details. If you wanna go even further in your watercolor journey, you can start with this painting right here. You can really deepen your values and different techniques. You can do either of these in this video. We're gonna be going over how to make washes, how to draw trees and how to paint them, and just how to make a beautiful composition. Um, feel free to take breaks during this huge video. I know it's gonna be a long one, but you're gonna learn so, so much, okay? So stay tuned and we're gonna learn how to make a wash first, then oh, a tree, and then make your snow globes. Okay, so stay tuned. Here's the first step. If you grabbed one of our art kits, you have all of these things except a pencil, a water cup, and a paper towel. If you did not get an art kit, you need all these different things. So in my right, left right here, paper towel, you'll need these for either spills or just cleaning your brush. Here's my paint palette. Normally paint palettes are made with a little piece of plastic on top of something to keep it nice and rigid. Grab a water cup. I suggest that you have two water cups just in case you want clean water at any time. You don't have to get up. I'm lazy, so I do that. Here's all of my paints. These are watercolor paints and a gorgeous palette. I mean, if you have a palette with just the primaries and the secondaries, it's totally fine. And our paper. Our brushes, always get a really big wash brush and get a detail brush. And then obviously my pencil for when we actually get drawing. So let's start with some techniques. The first technique that we should really look at is called just a wash. You could have a flat wash, you could have a graded wash, you could have a wet on wet wash, but all a wash is, is getting color onto your paper. So grab your big brush, tap the bottom of your water, tap, tap, tap. You never wanna tap on the side of your water because obviously that would make a splash everywhere. So you're just gonna wipe off any excess. Look for the best color in your palette. I'm gonna be using a lot of cold colors, which are the blues, the greens, the purples. And just rub right in there. Get a bunch of paint onto your brush. So a wash is just getting paint onto your paper. If you can see, these are called lap lines. If you don't like those, get a bunch of water onto your brush. Make a pool of water. And drag that pool of water around on your paper, wherever you wanna put that wash. Washes are really great for backgrounds, skies, water, that kind of a thing. I'm pulling all of my liquid down and I'm even grabbing my paper and lifting it up. So I'm using gravity to my advantage. Then I'm just gonna clean off my brush, dry it off a little bit, maybe even poking my paper towel and I'm gonna suck up all that extra water just so it doesn't begin to pool. So it doesn't have those lap lines. This gives more of a watercolor effect. This, because of the types of paint, types of watercolor paint these are, these are really nice and flat, so they photograph really well. This is great for a sky. Um, this works just as well. You can even go over this little bit of water if you wanna get rid of those lines. Now we're gonna look at a graded wash. I'm gonna just put away my big paintbrush. I'm gonna get my medium paintbrush. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna tap, tap, tap the bottom of my water cup. Get a teeny bit of that water off of there, but I do want it to be pretty wet. Grab a color. A graded wash is also known as like an ombre. You've definitely seen it. If you start seeing your brush getting kind of dry or textured, just add a little bit more water. 
Watercolor loves to interact with water, obviously. It's hydrophilic, not hydrophobic. Hydrophilic means that it likes water. So do you see that pool right there? Now I'm gonna add another color to make it that gradient. I'm gonna add it to that pool and then keep pulling down that puddle. Watercolor also always dries differently. So this might look like this now, but once it's completely dry, it's gonna dry a little bit different. The type of paint you're using is really wonderful for actually showing the effect of what it will dry like. Some watercolors completely dry differently, even different colors. But that is a graded wash, a nice mix together. Sometimes, especially with this palette, I'll go back the other way, add a little bit of water. And mix them a teensy bit more, just with a water wash. I'm pressing really lightly. You don't want to press too hard or else that'll make your paper kind of tear and pull at you. But that's a beautiful gradient right there. This is wonderful if you're trying to do maybe a sunrise or a sunset or just to add some value to your painting. So that's a graded wash. So now we're going to be doing a lifting off technique. This is wonderful for clouds or maybe you want some negative space in your painting. You have to first make a wash, but you know how to do that now. You grab that puddle and pull, lift up your paper, Then you're gonna grab a really dry paintbrush like I have over here, I haven't even used this. You can maybe even make sure it's dry by putting it on the paper towel. And then you can lift off some paint. Maybe where you wanna put cloud. So this is a wash, a different type of wash, a graded wash, and a lift technique. If you want to do just a glaze, you would go right over a wash with the same color or a different color. You can paint over the same wash and that'll just make it darker. And that could be called a glaze. This is wonderful for something called atmospheric perspective. Things farther away have less value. Things toward our eye have more value in detail. When we are gonna be making our gorgeous winter landscape, we're gonna be using all these three techniques plus a few different techniques. So let me show you specifically how we're gonna make a winter tree. What you wanna do first is think of the shape and form of a tree. Normally trees are high at the top, high and skinny at the top, and thicker on the bottom. We're gonna be making a pine tree. So I'm just using my pencil and I'm just drawing a line. And then with my pencil, I'm just gonna shade. You never wanna truly draw a line when you're watercoloring, because water will pull into where you've made that line because you've been indenting your paper. So I'm just gonna shade, try not to press too, too much. And just remind myself kind of what a pine tree looks like. Mathematically, these are called fractals. Just like people are fractals. A fractal is something that stems off of one thing and creates many things. So with trees, the thing that it is stemming off of is the base of the tree or the tree trunk. And then what's coming off are all these beautiful branches. Once you get comfortable, you probably don't even have to draw it, but just to draw that little pine tree is always a good idea. So now you're gonna grab your small detail brush, the one that has a point and you are just gonna grab any of these greens. Something awesome about this palette is that the actual lid can come off of it. So it gives you a little bit more space on your workspace. Oop. 
So grab a darker green. I'm gonna use this sage green. Add a little bit of water and bring it over to your mixing palette. In three different spots. Then add a little bit of water and go to a lighter green. Mix a lighter version of your green. And then go over to a blue and mix your green with your blue. You really want it to be like an aqua-y green, almost like an emerald. We're doing this because we want to get different values to show different light spectrums in your tree. All right, I'm gonna take the darkest value, which is my color over here, my um, mixed color with blue and green. And I'm just going to outline little bottoms of my tree. Just little zigzaggy lines. That I'm gonna probably fill in later, almost like little arrows. All the way down my tree. See how they're flailing up here? Just gonna keep going. I'm making my lines longer toward the bottom of the ground. You don't have to connect every line because we're gonna add in even more green later. Now go to the next darkest color. So my darkest color was on the bottom. My next darkest color will just be blended in there. Just touch those evergreen leaves. Pine needles, pine needles. <laughs> Now we're gonna go into that lighter color of that green. And you're just gonna add in even more values. And all these empty spaces, this is called negative space. We're gonna be using that to our advantage because we're gonna add snow into our pine tree. Alrighty. We're gonna let that chill out and dry just for a second. And then we're gonna come in with just some clean water and make your snow. I just got new water. So I'm gonna make sure that all of my paintbrushes are nice and clean. Tap, tap, tap on the clean water. I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't make a mark over here on my paper towel. Then I'm just gonna get that clean water and I'm going to add a little bit of water on my branches. This is gonna make your shadows for your snow for you. So you can just come back in either with your white watercolor or just with regular water. Think about where the snow would be. It'd probably be on the tips of different branches. Probably on the top, right? Think of Hallmark movies, think of when you're actually making um, Christmas cards. Which, oh man, this would be a beautiful Christmas card. Or just even a winter project. I'm also adding a little bit of water to the base of my tree just to blend in my wash a little bit. Then I'm gonna go in with that medium, actually that light green and I'm gonna think where would the snow not touch? So probably base of my tree wouldn't see a lot of snow. Okay, 
and I'm using that negative space right here to create almost that snowy look. Now I'm just going in with different greens, adding in just a little bit of wash to the base of my tree. Then really clean out your brush. We are really fortunate because in this palette we do have a white that I'm going to add, but if you don't have a white to your palette, maybe a color pencil or something would totally work. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white, going to add it to the tips. It just adds a little bit more value to your painting. Of course, if we did a wash behind this, you would be able to see this white really well. Now I know this is pretty complicated, but you totally have the skill to do it. It's pretty simple once you've done it once before. We're not done yet though. We need to just add in the trunk of our tree and we're just going to add teeny tiny little shadows of the tree trunk because we want this to look like a nice dense fir tree. So think of what colors you would need for your tree. I'm gonna make my tree obviously brown. Hey, you could go, you could go crazy though. It could be a pink tree. It could be a purple tree, it'd be gorgeous. All right, the more water you add, the lighter the color it will be. So I have not added a lot of water to my paint here. I've just gone almost dry brush, a teeny bit of water with a lot of brown paint. I have outlined everything I want. I've added just a teeny bit of a shadow. I want you to be able to see some of the sticks here. Now what I'm gonna do is wash off my paintbrush. and just add water to the middle here. It'll almost add shadows to itself. Is how you make a beautiful pine tree. All right, now let's talk snow. Snow is obviously very white, hopefully, unless it gets like gross, you know, don't eat the, you know. So you have to think on a white surface, it makes shadows. So we're going to be making shadows from our pine tree. And this is just to get you ready for the final product. So this should be on one of your practice papers. If you did buy an art kit, you should have about five practice papers. I'm gonna get new water. So if I look, I have a white paper here. This makes a gray shadow. So if I wanted to make some shadows on snow, normally the shadows would be nice and gray. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my palette over here. You can use either paintbrush. Um, it could be your rounded paintbrush, your flat brush. Grab just a little swipe of black and add it to that dab right over there. Now, this is projecting, my hand is projecting a gray shadow here because I'm using um, artificial light that has a white base. If you were outside, it would be um, kind of a blue-based light, unless it's golden hour, but that's advanced stuff. You don't need to know about that. So what I'm actually gonna do is add a teeny bit of blue to this gray to make a bluish gray. And this is gonna be my shadow for my snow. So I have to think, which side do I want my sun? Let's pretend my sun is casting over here. 
my son, let's say, is the paper towel. And it's casting a light onto my tree. Underneath my tree would have that gorgeous shadow. And trees, especially pine trees, are almost a triangle shape. So I'm gonna to try to echo that triangle shape in my shadow. Ta-da! And we want to make this pine tree look as if it were on a snowy hill. So I'm just gonna make different shadows to almost make it look like it is on some snow. Maybe back here is the actual hill. Maybe we could add a little snowy shadow there. Now to my artist eye, that just looks like a line. So I'm going to dull that out with a little bit of water. To make it look a little bit more natural. Maybe this shadow could be from a rock or just a little pitch in the snow. Maybe there is a shadow back here from another pitch in the snow. Blend that out. And if you stopped right here, you would have a gorgeous card. There we could say, happy holidays, happy new year, whatever, <laughs> whatever time of year it is where you are. That's gorgeous. But now we're gonna go into the final product. We're gonna make sure we have all of our washes. We know how to do all these now. We know how to make detailed lines. And we know how to blend out different shadows, different detailed lines. We know about atmospheric perspective. You do know all these different things. So let's just put it together into one finished piece. Here's my setup for my final product. Just like before, you have a nice, clean, and calm surface. Um, make sure that you have all three of your paintbrushes and a pencil because we're about to draw. I also have over here just a plant bottom. Um, you just want a really big circle that's going to almost go from edge to edge. I'm going to start to trace this because we are going to be creating a little snow globe just to get you really comfortable with the paints. Now, if you just want to do the landscape just to learn and practice your skill, you totally can, but I'm going to frame it with a cute little snow globe here. So we're going to first draw the circle, then the base, and then we're going to paint the background first. So, first we have to draw our circle. I'm gonna put my globe part, my sphere, pretty high up on my paper because I want room for my base, so almost on the top half, then you always want to really lightly draw, just like when we were saying for the pine tree, you don't wanna make a dent in your paper. Draw light till you get it right. So here's my circle. I'm gonna now just draw little mountains in my background. You want them to be kind of sharp at some tops. That replicates ice and snow. Draw in a few mountains. Compositionally, you normally wanna go with threes. So I'm gonna have three tops to my mountains. Now I'm just gonna start adding in little snow drifts. This is where we're going to see a whole bunch of shadows. There's little wiggly lines. Really, really light, remember. All right, now on the bottom half, I'm gonna start drawing in little hills of snow. These are closer to our eyes, so they're gonna be a little bit more rounded than our mountains. Just 
just sketching really lightly. If you make a mistake, you totally can just erase it. Okay, right in the middle, I'm gonna have a um, river. So I'm just gonna make another little snow drift over here. And then over here, I'm gonna draw it into that snow drift and out. A lot of these shapes are gonna be covered with shrubs and rocks and things. So just really organic, really sketchy lines. And then now we're ready to paint. Just like before, we're gonna make a wash. So we're gonna do a complete flat wash of one color. Whole, put a whole bunch of water over on your blending pad. And if your blending pad is messy from before, just a wet paper towel will get all that paint off. Making a big puddle. I want my sky to first be pretty light blue. So I'm gonna come over here, get some blue. In the palette in the art kit it has a nice pale blue. I'm gonna add that too. Add a whole bunch of water. So I want enough paint to make my whole wash. I'm gonna do the type of wash that you put a puddle of paint onto your paper and then you drag around that puddle. So I'm gonna start really carefully near my mountains. Get even more paint, I wanna drag that puddle. So I don't want any lap lines in my sky. And remember with watercolor, you can always go darker, but you can't always go lighter. So doing a light wash will always pay off. Drag my puddle back down here. And now I'm just gonna really focus on dragging that puddle all around. I'm moving my paper all around to help with gravity to move my puddle. I'm using my smaller brush, but feel free to use your larger brush if you think it'll help you a little bit more. Then we have a nice flat wash. See where that puddle is? I wanna just make my paintbrush really, really dry and just suck that up right there. Okay, that's pretty beautiful. I think I'm gonna make another wash and just maybe add some Aurora Borealis, maybe add some purples, just to give a little bit more of dimension. But since water reflects the sky, I'm gonna do the exact same thing to my river. Anything that we do to our sky, we wanna do the exact same thing to our river because of the reflection. All right, and I'm gonna suck up that puddle right there. Blend it right up into my snowbank. And suck up any puddle that you see. You could do something called wet on wet, and I can show you that right now. Wet on wet is exactly what it sounds like. You just add some color directly into wet paint on your page. So maybe if I wanted to add a really light, light purple, add it into that wet wash that I just had. Since I'm doing it over here, I'll also do it into my river. Blend 
blended in almost like when we were making our snowbanks before. Just add a little bit of dimension to our snow globe. That was a really good example of wet on wet. I added a little bit too much wetness, so I'm gonna lift off some of that paint with my clean paintbrush. Dry it off. And then maybe add a teensy bit into that corner. Again, just to give it some dimension, some visual interest. I'm gonna let this totally dry and then I'm gonna reassess. Now that that's dried down really nicely, I'm just gonna start making some shadows for my different parts of the snow. So just like in our snow before, we are going to get a teeny little drop of that black. And this is outside, so I'm gonna get a teeny little drop of that blue and a whole bunch of water. To me, this looks really gray, so I'm just gonna get a little bit more blue. Don't be afraid to play with the colors that you've made. It's your painting, you can mess it up if you want to. <laughs> there we go. It's also wonderful to test out the colors on a paper towel. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful color. All right, so always think where is the sunlight coming from? So I think that my sunlight is around here, almost where this little dot of purple is. So my shadows would be going away from the sun. I'm gonna add in a little bit of shadow to this side of my mountain. And I'm going along those little streaky marks that I've made for myself. And then I'm gonna blend it out with that water. I'm just gonna give a little bit of dimension to all of my mountains. Now we talked about atmospheric perspective already. This mountain is in front of these two mountains, so it will be darker. With watercolor, to add darkness, you add more paint. If you want a color to be lighter, you add water. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my already watered down paint. I'm gonna go to the next mountain over just outline those little squiggles and again I said that my sun was right here so it's away from my sun is where my shadows are gonna start to be and then blend it out with some water I'm gonna do the exact same thing add water to my color and start to add in some paint to my back mountain. Blend it out with water. Okay, I'm actually gonna suck up a little bit of this paint with a dry brush. Then go back in, see if you're missing any areas. You want some places maybe to have a little bit more of a streaky line on them. Maybe you want to add a little bit more value to different parts of the mountain. I'm just darkening up that front mountain just so it looks like it's actually in front of the other guys. I'm 
it looks like a tundra or maybe this would be an Alaska or something. All right, beautiful. Now we're gonna do the same thing with this snow. So this snow is the closest to our eye. So this is gonna to be totally white. This snow is gonna be the lightest of our gray. This snow is gonna be the gray that we already have. So think of where the shadow would be, maybe near this hill. Maybe the shadow would be near a river. And then blend that out with water. Great. Now we're gonna add a whole bunch of water to the color we've made and do the exact same technique near the river. Oh, not that one. Oof, close one. And blend it out with some water. And before we move on, you want this to completely dry. It should only take about five minutes. Mountains are all dry. Um, our shadows from our hills have all dried. Eventually, I think we do want to kind of punch up this value here a little bit more, but let's start working on these trees. Remember that those pine trees from before are nice and triangular. I'm just gonna grab right from the palette, a little bit of green, and add a bunch of water to it for the background color, maybe a teeny bit of gray, just to dull it down a little bit. A lot of water, all right. Now, you do not want a lot of paint on your brush. You want your brush to be nice and pointy, so grab that tiny, tiny guy. And right on this first hill over here, you're just gonna draw Teeny tiny little lines straight out of the hill. Boop, boop, boop. And then you're gonna rock your brush back and forth. These are just kind of suggestions of trees back here. Even less water on your brush. They're teeny, teeny, tiny. This is almost going to be the shadow of the trees. Rock back and forth in a triangle. Ooh, ooh. They're already so cute. Okay. You can do the same thing on this hill if you'd like. I'm going to keep these hill pretty sparse. Just maybe some rocks and some shrubs. Maybe even um, a paw print from a bunny or something. But if you're gonna go over to this hill over here, if you draw a teeny bit of a tree, you're just gonna start with the top and just plan out where you want different trees to go. I think I want a tree over here and a tree over here. Go grab your pencil and just do the exact same thing that we were doing with this pine tree right here. These will probably collide together to make a semi-forest. Go back to your pointed brush. Make sure there's not a too, too much water on it. Go get your green. and make those teeny tiny brush strokes. Okay, I'm gonna go into a different kind of green. Maybe just this sap green. Go 
right into those shapes, those curved lines that you saw before. I'm just press, press, pressing, tap, tap, tapping onto the page with my brush. Tap, tap, tap. Just to get a little bit more of that texture with your watercolor paints. Remember, you're leaving those little spots for some snow, so keep that negative space in there. And I even want a little tree right here. If you feel confident enough, just go in with those dots of triangles. Even a teeny one back here. Oh, it's so cute. Now that these have dried down a little bit, go in with a different kind of green and you're gonna make a teeny bit um, darker tree in front of those trees. Still pretty faint, use a lot of water, but you want that really nice point to your brush. Smaller here. Less water. Oops. It can get really messy really quickly, so be nice and patient. Allow things to dry before you paint over it. That's what that glazing's for. Just squiggly triangles, basically. There we go. Okay. Now, I've noticed that my sky has gotten pretty dull, pretty light. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of a blue and I'm just gonna do a wash over my sky. The whole thing blue, just like I did before. But the interesting part is that I'm gonna do the same exact thing with my river. With my blue, I just wanna make teeny bits of a current. way down my stream. Just tiny little brush strokes. Allow it to dry halfway and then we're gonna blend it all together with a little bit of water. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to put a blue wash over my sky. I'm gonna switch out my water because I want really clean water for this. Clean up my brush. We're gonna add snow, just like we did before, kind of scrubbing out that area. bit of some shadow underneath our trees just like we've done all this time. Add a little bit of blue and black to make that smoky gray. A whole lot of water. And then just darken around and under your trees. Remember our sun is around here, so they would darken this way. Oh, 
we're gonna make just some rocks. This is just a really easy way to make rocks on a beach or near a river. You're gonna grab some brown, bring it over to your palette, grab some black. You want a really dry brush, make it really pointy. And you just wanna draw a rock. Gonna draw the underneath a few rocks. Let's throw one over here too. Just to give it some visual interest. Then completely wash out your brush, get some nice clean water, and put some water inside those rocks. Blend into the water. It does all the work for you. There are some rocks. <laughs> All right, so let's just say this is Alaska, Alaska snow globe. Alaska has a bunch of plants kind of everywhere, totally different than what we have. I'm gonna grab some brown. Maybe I'll use some of this brown. Really dilute it. And I wanna add some of that gray into the brown. We're just gonna make some shadows for our plants. Uh, maybe there's some plants here, near the water. How about some over here, near this rock, and growing in between these rocks. And these are just the shadows of the plants. I wanna throw one over here too. really look try to have an artist's eye about it this is your painting do you want it to be darker anywhere i think i want to darken up near my riverbed it's your masterpiece so whatever you want goes which is so nice in life right this up a little bit. Almost like it's wet snow from being next to the river. And I'm going to let that completely dry for again another five minutes. Finishing touches. I'm going to add in the actual plants for these shadows. I'm going to put in a little bit more green and putting in the details on the bottom of my trees maybe clean up these trees a little bit and then we're gonna actually make it a snow globe so to make your actual plants I want you to really dry off your brush go into some wet green in your palette and you wanna actually see the bristles of your brush. You don't want it to be pointy like you were before. And just teeny tiny little flicks. Really spiny little plants we're going for. It's awesome little textures. Great, okay. I'm gonna do the same exact technique. I should have actually just left that on my brush. Really, really dry brush. Do the same thing over these trees. Add a little bit of texture on top of them. Tap, tap, tapping with your brush. It's called dry brushing. That looks like a little forest here. Great. You 
do the exact same thing with these trees. I'm gonna go into um, a little bit of brown and green. Again, you wanna be able to see those bristles, perfect. We want that point back on our brush. Grab a little brown and paint in our stumps. And our little branches, if you can see any of them. Clean out our brush. And we're doing the technique like we did before, where we draw the line and then add a little bit of water. Beautiful. Okay. Um, let's add in some snow pitches like we did here. Just teeny tiny bumps in our snow, just to give it a little bit more of a visual interest. Oh, I got into green in there. I'm blending out with that water. Okay. Beautiful. Here's where you can totally go wild. You can add in more current. You can maybe make the sky darker. You can go completely wild with this. But to make it an actual snow globe, we are going to add a base. Whatever color that you want for your base, go ahead and do it. I'm going to be very boring and go for this brownish tone. You're going to draw just a curve on one side, another curve on the other side, right with your brush. Draw another little happy face line here. I want to be pretty even. You're gonna do it again. A little curve line here, curve line here, and connect them. Now with a bunch of water, you're gonna blend in that color. This is gonna give you a beautiful texture on the base of your snow globe. I just want to sharpen up some of these. Okay, I think you can think of one thing that our snow globe is missing, which is snow. You can also, if you have a little bit of acrylic paint or a white color pencil, add little shiny marks. But to add your snow, you want to get some clean water. Wake up your white here. There are two different techniques. You could add in teeny tiny little dots with your actual paintbrush, or you can put a lot of water into your white here. Use the back of your paintbrush and dot into your snow globe that way. Either way, it turns out so beautiful. Feel free to add maybe some rabbit prints, maybe a moose in the distance. This is kind of a beautiful way 
to just open up this picture and make it your own. I'm even gonna add in a little bit of snow right onto my trees. And there we go. Let it dry, sign your name, and then you're finally done. In order to clean up your station, you just take a little bit of water, wipe any extra colors off of your blending. You wanna wash your brushes with some soap and water. Put your lid back on, and then buy a frame for your new gorgeous watercolor. You made it. You did it. You did a wonderful job. Now you have a beautiful card to send to somebody. You can photograph this for your Instagram or you can just keep painting as many beautiful landscapes as you can. Remember, washes for the background, dry brushes for plants. Um, you can add as much detail as you want to your composition. Just keep layering up that paint. Be patient with yourself. And I'm sure it came out so, so beautiful. I really like how this came out and I hope that I can soon see how yours came out. Okay, so good luck, happy painting, and have a good day, Ernest.